three out of four businesses fail in the first five years, and 90% of those failures are due to poor management. But here to stop the rot, a mad butcher, Peter Leach, and his chief executive, Michael Morton. With his flair for marketing and promotion, Peter can sell ice to Eskimos, while Mike is the numbers man with a sharp eye for the bottom line. A dream team for business nightmares. Tonight, a struggling furniture manufacturer needs to be brought up to speed. You don't have the killer instinct. Yeah. Like, it's a jungle out there. And a comedy booking agent whose business is a joke. You've told me that, that is an issue. You yeah. haven't given me any solutions to that. Well, don't, not, not be a comedian on the night. Tough talking, no excuses, tonight on A Mad Business. Down an alleyway in industrial Hamilton, New Zealand, is Kingwood Furniture, a small family company making quality wooden products. Our core business really is custom-made solid wood furniture. We've been in business about nine years. We started with very little. I just borrowed everything from the bank to, to invest into the company. We've built that up over the years with more machinery and all that sort of thing. At this stage, I thought you know things would have got a little bit easier by now, but it's, we're still struggling away. And Vaughan reckons the main reason is the flood of cheap imports that Kingwood can't hope to compete with. The market seems to be changing. There's a lot more options for people out there. All those sort of things have really affected um, business in general. We've got a staff of about 11. My mother actually runs the office and my brother is the production manager of the factory. The worst thing in the world is having to lay off people and you just don't ever want to do that. You do worry about it, wake up in the middle of the night and go, are we going to you know, have enough work to do you know, next week, the week after? You pour your heart and soul into your own business and everything at the end of the day is, is on the line. And we don't want to get into the situation where we have to lose it all. It's a grim equation. Either sell more stock or sell up shop. But the cavalry is on its way. Peter and Mike know a few things about selling. But what they don't know is how to find this place. They're very late. Come on, Vaughan, where are the shines? It's taken us ages to find you today, mate. What's going on? We Let's go and you. sort it out now. Come on, mate, come on. Come on. Look, you can't see your sign over there. You look at this building over here. It's clear, it's bright. OK, it's the front of the building. You've got to do something like that. Have you done any paper advertising or anything like that? We have, yeah. OK, so people are seeing you advertising they're going to come and look for you, they're not going to find you. You're one of five businesses down that alleyway there and your sign just doesn't pop. There's also no sign that Kingwood has a showroom open to the public. And nothing on the vans. It's a marketing disaster. But Vaughan does have some very flashy equipment. Well, Vaughan, tell us about this machine. It looks like something out of a space-age bloody movie. It's an automatic router, mate. I'm a butcher, not a bloody cabinet maker, mate. It's a computerised machine centre. We'll basically cut anything that we program into it. What's something like this worth, Vaughan? Oh, 250, 300,000. Have you got it going 24 hours a day? No, no, we need a bit more work for it. What percentage of the time is it used doing your stuff? Probably about 25%. Not enough. You've got the machine, you've got the expertise and the people that can operate it. We just need to go and get the work. Kingwood depends on showroom sales for almost all the company's income, and Vaughan's mum is pretty much the whole sales team. Ah, Glennis, how are you? Hello. What do you do here, dear? I'm the office manager here, and I do all the sales in the showroom. Why don't you try to sell the old butcher something? OK. This is a chopping block or a kitchen island. You can use it as a savoury. It's made of New Zealand Rimu. You can chop your meat on it, or you can put your bottle of beer on it. Well, I'll take three for $200. Um, Peter, these are $1,280 each. Oh, I didn't see that sign there. How about one for $1,000, Peter? I'll stick to me old butcher's block. Nice solid end grain. Look at that, nicely oiled. Beautiful. Here you go, Scrooge McDuck. That's more your limit, 190 bucks. I can't afford that either. But Mike knows plenty of people will buy if they can find the showroom and if Kingwood could get its products into other showrooms in bigger markets. I think there's some wholesale that we can go and chase. There's some big individual type furniture shops that display and sell a large percentage of the type of furniture that you make. I think we should be approaching them as well. So plenty to get on with. But now it's time to meet Andre King, 
a man who knows trying to make a buck in comedy in New Zealand is simply not funny. I've worked as a stand-up comedian for probably the last five years. What I found is that there's just not a whole lot of work out there and it's really difficult to try and make a living just off doing you know, stand-up. So the idea is to set up a, a regular network of, of comedy shows. Andre's company, Comic Booking, sells comedy shows to pubs and clubs around Auckland. The venue pays Andre, Andre pays the comedians, and takes a cut for himself for the management. It's kind of a, a passive income sort of thing where if I've got three other comics performing, I'm still making income off that show, even though I could be you know, halfway down the country performing somewhere else. <laughs> so I figured, how am I going to fund this little venture? Uh, then it struck me, it struck me just out of the blue, I'm brown. So I got some funding. Uh, thank you, wins. <laughs> Andre got $5,000 start-up and another grand a month for the first six months. But now, two months into it, he's starting to appreciate what he's got himself into. The shows will only run as long as people keep coming to the venue. If people don't come to the venue, then the shows aren't going to last very long. And that means that the comedian's going to be out of work, the venue's going to be out of pocket, and it just becomes nightmarish. Andre's aim is to be running 10 comedy shows a week across Auckland. So far, he's nowhere near it. It's just one or two a week if he's lucky, and comic bookings is going nowhere fast. If I'm not successful in what I do, then I can't pay my rent. I uh, can't buy food. I mean, this is my life. It's all or nothing. It's, it's everything I've got. Now, Peter Leach and Mike Morton appreciate a good laugh, but not at the expense of a struggling business. So they've arrived to brighten Andre's prospects. Andre, how are you, mate? Oh, I'm good. Come on, you, mate. Oh, this yeah. is Michael. Andre, hey, how are you? How Please you meet you. This with your best joke, mate. That's funny. <laughs> <laughs> You're good, mate. You're good. Right. Let's come inside. <laughs> <laughs> He's good, mate. Guess you had to be there. Well, Michael, let's get down to the tin tacks, the hard stuff. So, Andre, you are a stand-up comedian. Why start the business? Why not just carry on with what you were doing? There's just not enough work as a stand-up comic to actually be able to pay your bills. And now you're trying to find work for a whole lot of other performers. What makes you think that booking gigs for other comedians is going to pay the bills? Because I get to perform in the shows as well as take a production fee off the top. So essentially it's a double dip in the pot. It sounds good in theory, but Andre's books tell another story. If we go through your numbers, you say you've been uh, in business for a couple of months now. Um, the stuff that I have, it looks like you've got sort of six bookings for September. Six bookings a month? Andre was banking on ten bookings a week. When I compiled my business plan and my cash flow forecast, it was based on each venue doing weekly gigs. However, that's not an option for most venues, so uh, they only run monthly gigs. So the gigs just aren't there. Nowhere near the number Andre based his business plan on. So has he actually got a business? Has he got anything to sell? All right. What act can you give me? Name me three comedians you can give me. You and Gilmore, Mike King, Brendan Lovegrove, Jan Marie, Michelle Court, Jeremy Elwood. So take your pick. Couple that I know of, uh, Mike King, you and Gilmore, they're, they're on your box. So they work for you. Uh, well, it's not as formal as that. It's more along the lines of I know them. If I organise a show and book them to do a show, they will come along and perform for a set rate. It's all sounding a bit loose to hard-nosed business brains like Peter and Mike, and they're also not sure about Andre's claim. He's got 120 comedians to choose from. How many would you want to use of those 120? Uh, about 60. How are you going to stop the shows from being stale? I make a point of uh, not booking any comic at consecutive venues any closer than three to four weeks apart. Once you've set all these gigs up for the comedians, what's to stop them cutting you out? About 150 kilos of grunt. <laughs> Very nice. I don't know if he's really got a business. He's got no contracts with the comedians. He's got no formal arrangements, it's, it's all loose. There's a few things that concern me about him. Maybe he wasn't that funny on the doorstep, to be fair. <laughs> the financials don't stack up. He had a plan where he's going to do 10 gigs a week. These pubs want one gig a month. He's gone and started a business without doing the research to say, is there a need for it? I want him to convince me from a financial point of view that there is a business here. We need to see him put a proposal to a pub, see how he sells it, and we need to go to a pub and see how good the gigs are. Coming up, Pete and Mike put Andre on the spot. How funny is he? We uh, probably pause at this moment so ladies can get control of their pulses. Not very. Good, that works. Thanks for coming with me. 
and Vaughan the furniture maker finds the mad butcher doesn't mince his words. If that's the case, your advertising is not working. Because I think that's actually bullshit. <laughs> Kingwood Furniture prides itself on top quality custom made products, but cheap imports are hammering the business. No one can find the place because the signs are atrocious and poor sales are putting the jobs of all the staff on the line. But mad butcher Peter Leach and his chief executive Mike Morton are on the case. I believe you've got a, a niche in the market because you're making one-off type stuff and you, it's all handcrafted. What we need to do is expel the virtues of that to a bigger audience of people. Talk us through what you believe has been successful in your marketing strategy to get people to come in here. Um, we, we tend to find print media is always pretty good. We've got our website, we get a little bit off that, but by far the, the most has been word of mouth. That's still our biggest marketing tool that's, there. If that's the case, yeah. your advertising is not working. Because I think that's actually bullshit. I wouldn't have grown my business without the fact of hard sell advertising. We need to review your print media because I don't think you're getting enough people through the doors. Well, Michael, I'm excited about this guy. He's making a you know, good product, but his showroom's down the bloody long alleyway. No one knows where it is. His signs on the road are shit. And the thing that got up my nose when he said, oh, word of mouth is the way to go. Well, mate, that's a load of bullshit. Advertising pays. That's why we've gone from one shop to 35 stores. He's got a, a base business that, that's going all right, but it's solely reliant on people coming in and buying it. He, he needs to get that to be a lot broader. Maybe get some into a, a different retail outlet, because he's, you know, he's got his little showroom. Him and his mum, lovely, lovely people, are they salesmen? Can they close a deal when somebody comes into that workshop? His mother makes a great ham sandwich as well. <laughs> you know, very nice. I think he's going to be an exciting prospect, to be fair, and I think we can work with him really, really good. Peter's bang on. Vaughn straight into hustling for wholesale orders. Yeah, I'm sure we could do those components for you. Yeah, we can turn it around fairly promptly for you as well. Come around and have a look at them, uh, say, tomorrow if you want to. And Pete and Mike also hit the phones. G'day, is that Paddy from Stevens? Peter Leach, the mad butcher. I've got a young uh, cabinet making, furniture making called Vaughn from Hamilton. I'd like to bring him to see you about selling you some chopping boards. We've got a guy who makes some furniture. We'd like to make an appointment if we can to come and see you so you can get some ideas from what's in and what's not in and furniture at the moment. Meanwhile, after his rev up from Pete and Mike, Andre from Comic Bookings is also trying to drum up business, organising stand-up comedy shows for himself and other performers. So we've got to text them all, make sure they know exactly where the venue is. They have to have all the posters and invoices organised for the other venues. They have to work out uh, all of the the pay rates and everything for the different comics. Andre's business plan calls for him to organise 10 shows a week, but so far he's scraping to get one or two. It's no wonder he's been driven to distraction. He has to drum up more business, write his own comedy routines, perform on stage, and manage the gigs. O'Hagan's Irish Pub and Grill. Two, two, check. Check, one, two, check. Ift pos. Cash. So I've just been to a money machine and got out some cash for the comics. Okay, Vaughan, you're the MC. If you can take those pay packets Sweet. and just pay everyone as appropriate. All right, but Dave, if I can get you to fill out that IR330. Sam, nice to see you. Have a good gig. Another night, another show. But this time, as well as managing the gig, Andre's also going to perform. My mum's here. So I'm, I'm probably going to have to watch my P's and Q's on stage tonight and limit the mum jokes. But mum is the least of Andre's worries. Mike and Peter go into spring a surprise visit. Are they coming tonight? Oh, that'll be nice. <laughs> uh, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Bog for the, uh, for the first, the inaugural, the one, the, uh, the first ever comedy night at the Bog in Manukau. Big round of applause for Paul for putting on a comedy night. Andre was down to MC tonight's show, but one of the comedians hasn't fronted up, so he's had to step into the breach, unprepared and unrehearsed. We uh, should probably pause at this moment so the ladies can get control of their pulses. Good, that worked. Thanks for coming with me. The audience is a little on the chilly side. 
They're not used to stand-up comedy in their pub, oh, and Andre is short on laughs. Ah, oh, you're bugging my eye! It's the wrong postage! No. Good, wow. Kind of quiet tonight, that's interesting. Andre's dying up there. He's lost the audience, and is cool. You guys are getting very chatty down the back there. If you wouldn't mind escaping the noise now, that'd be awesome. Cheers. And I'll stop paying out. So Andre bombs, and Pete and Mike are left wondering if he's got any business running comedy shows or being up on stage himself. Clearly he can't do both, and maybe not either. Peter and Mike decide it's time they got an expert opinion. Scott's got over 20 years' experience in the comedy business. He's not a comedian. He only looks funny. Scott, we're dealing with a young guy called um, Andre King. He's a comedian. Have you heard of him? Yep. He started a new business where he's both going to perform in acts as well as book acts. Is there a market for comedians out there in, in pubs? There is a market out there. Um, it's the harder market. The thing is that it's their local. You're on their territory, and you better be funny because they're probably feeling like they can say something if you're not. That's a good point. Me and Phil Gifford used to do shows around the uh, the pubs for the breweries and you'd get people in the bar and mate they would give it to you all they wanted to do was drink booze in the bar didn't want you there you know so that's a great point yeah. <laughs> that's because you're not funny mate you're only jealous because you didn't get paid the money i did to do the shows around new zealand 79 shows we done in your experience, can Andre be a comedian working alongside these guys as well as be the guy who's promoting them? Well, he would be one of the first to do that because I've seen a number of comedians over the last 10 to 15 years who have started up their own gigs. The hard part is trying to be one of the guys on stage and the boss off stage. These guys are quite pumped after a show. It's very easy to get on the wrong side of them if you criticise them at the wrong moment um, and you end, all of a sudden you're, some, you're someone's enemy. What is the pool of talent that Andre can pull from? I've got, say, 40 or 50 comedians. I think he probably should be working with about 25 of those. The, the rest would be probably too junior to, to do much more than a short set. He's talking about having a pool of you know, 60 people that he'd use. Right. And you're suggesting to us that it's, it's nowhere near that. I don't know who those 60 are. You're being um, polite, mate. Yeah. You told us it's 20 people. I, so I would have I'd say a core of 25 I'd probably use out there in those venues. Well, mate, the fact is he needs to get his head out of his ass and tell us the truth. Because I'm annoyed he's telling us porkies, and I'm not happy with that. You're the expert in the bloody field. When it comes to sausages, I'm the expert. You're the expert comedian, and I don't know what you're here for, but, mate, we're going to sort this out. Coming up, Pete and Mike apply the blowtorch, but Andre's not buckling. That's your solution? It is. Yeah. If I'm not going to be a comic, then there's no point to me running this business. And born from Kingwood Furniture learns that Assumption is the mother of all muck-ups. You don't assume anything, no. do you, Michael? Assume means make an asshole out of you and me. <laughs> um, so we don't want to do that. Business brains Peter Leach and Mike Morton want to help Andre King and his comic bookings business, but Andre's not making it easy. He's trying to manage the gigs and perform as well and bombing at both. Andre also reckons he's got his pick of 60 comedians for his shows, a claim the Butcher and Mike aren't buying. Well, Andre, we've been busy. We've been down to the comedy club in Queen Street and seen Scott. Have you? Good talk to him. He doesn't believe that the talent pool is as big as what you do for the type of stuff that you're doing. In Auckland, there's about 30 seasoned comics. The rest would be made up of these rookie comics. Your reputation is going to be built on how good these guys are, and if they flop... Which is why... A rookie comic only does a 10 to 15 minute spot and a rookie comic is always surrounded by seasoned performers. I think you're going to struggle being a comedian that works alongside these guys and the employer. Why? If you're removed from actually performing, then I believe that you're going to have a lot better control. You've got a newly established business, you're trying to get the bookings. If you're doing all of that sort of stuff, you can't be concentrating on being a comedian. If you're not concentrating on being a comedian, then your work's going to suffer. You could end up doing yourself more harm than what you are good. OK, I take exception to that. The show that you guys came to last night is not a typical show. You saw a show that was new, it had a non-comedy savvy audience, Come along to Fibber McPhee's on yep. any given Thursday night and you'll see what an established show looks like. It's a stalemate, so the butcher changes tack and tries the old good cop routine. He's going to give Andre's show another chance and he's thrown in a wild card to make things interesting. 
to be fair, we have to take your challenge up and have a look at it. We'll come in disguise. Here go as Mary Poppins, and I'll go as Hercules. And we'll see how the show goes, mate. But if Andre thinks the butcher's a pushover, he's dead wrong. He's just been softened up for the big bad cop. I don't know if we need to do any more, because everything we suggest that Andre disagrees with, so he might as well go and do it himself. Well, hang on. You haven't given me any suggestions. Well, we have. We've told you that we don't believe that you can be a comedian and a manager of people okay, on, on the so, same night. All right, you've told me that, that is an issue. You yep. haven't given me any solutions to that. Well, if you wanna, not, if not be a comedian on the night. Is, is That's a solution. your solution. It is. Dude, you, you, if I'm not going to be a comic, then there's no point to me running this business. Why? This whole thing is about promoting myself as a comic, it's about promoting the industry of comedy within New but Zealand. you don't want to have a business or you don't. I mean, you can't have a business to give money to other people. I am making money. For the last couple of months, I've been running everything in my life off what I've been producing. Well, this is news. A month ago, when Peter and Mike first met Andre, he claimed to be struggling. So Mike checks the bottom line. That you've made $1,300 for two months. Your business isn't booming, mate, but you don't want to take any advice from us. Let me ask you one question. Why don't you just promote yourself and make all the money yourself? You and Gilmore did exactly what you're talking about, and it's taken him, what, 12 years to get to the point where he is now. Well, I'm not happy to wait that long. Andre won't budge. Mike and Pete think he's wrong, but they're not giving up. Yet. We need to understand the full cost of your, of your when you're putting on a show, because there might be some better options. We haven't seen your sales pitch, we don't know how that works. You know, that's the sort of stuff that we can help you with. I reckon we can just about wrap things up now, Michael, because it's been a pretty fiery meeting today. It was like being in the round with Muhammad Ali, to be fair. Ooh, well, that was interesting. Yeah, quite heated. I think uh, they do have some ideas about what I can do, uh, but what I heard was what I wasn't doing, um, as opposed to what I could be doing, which kind of just pissed me off, quite frankly. Back in Hamilton, Kingwood Furniture desperately needs to increase sales or face staff layoffs and possible closure. Pete and Mike have told owner Vaughan he must put more effort into promoting and marketing his business, and they're back to check on progress. You've got to pull your socks up. Why haven't you got your band sign written? Uh, I haven't got round to it. Why haven't you got the sign up on the main road? You haven't got round to that either. Your sign on the street, it doesn't actually say open to the public, does it? No. So, no. what you should have with a sign on the street that doesn't tell people they're welcome to come to your showroom? We're assuming that. We're assuming you that don't they assume anything, no. do you, Michael? Assume means make an asshole out of you and me. <laughs> um, so we don't want to do that. Look, Vaughan, you need to look for opportunities that are going to be everyday income. You've got a big butcher's block sitting in your showroom, making smaller versions of those as in the cutting board type of thing. Also, I think we should try and get your, your mainstream products, being your tables and chairs or your cabinets, into a couple of the big retailers. Your speciality and your point of difference is that you custom make furniture. The way that you've been advertising your business, you haven't really been playing on your point of difference. Your catchphrase, any timber, any style, any design. You haven't played on that enough, and that yeah. needs to be the whole focus of your business. And the other thing is, too, do you actually have a salesman, or salesperson, I should say, in your showroom? I know you've got your mother, I yeah. know you're there, yeah. but are you good salespeople? Well, we think we are. You know, we're not precious sellers. We what tell percentage people, of people walk into that showroom, leave, buying something? No, probably 20%. What, what, I won't be happy with that. <laughs> what was it? It was 40%. I mean, the fact that they've come to you, they know that you custom make furniture, and they've left without buying something is an opportunity. It depends whether, whether we suit their market. Well, it depends you on see, the you see their want. market because you custom make furniture. Yeah. So you will make whatever they want, so you suit their so market. So you suit their market, you're losing you, sales. You've got to sell it, to them. 20% is a bullshit number. If you double that number, you've doubled your business overnight. Yeah. Doesn't it depend on the type of product they're looking for? What sort of furniture can't you make? Um, we can't um, uh, compete with the imports, I suppose. Cheap Don't and... throw the towel in before the fight started. Right. That's like me saying, we must get out of business because there's so many supermarkets in the market. It would be a matter of doing the numbers to how much a salesman would increase or potentially increase the sales. In life, there comes a time when you've got to put your balls in the vice. <laughs> and that's, you know, you've got to take a punt. Yeah. Mate, I to be honest, I took a punt employing him. Yeah. That was a major. 
I have never spent so much money advertising to get someone. Yes. I have never paid anyone as much as... And, mate, it's paid off handsomely. I'm not complaining. Yeah. You know? But you've got to have the balls to do it. Mate, it's a jungle out there. It's a jungle, mate. Don't think it's not. We're fighting it every day of the week. What we want to see from you now is a bit of urgency in what you're doing. We want to see the van get signed from We want to see you take care of the sign. We want to get full steam ahead from now on. Coming up, Andre pitches for new comic business. Badly. To be honest with you, I don't know how it would run as a venue for a comedy show. I have no idea how it's going to work. This isn't giving me a lot of confidence, Andre. And Kingwood's fine furniture is a hard sell to hard-nosed retailers. That is uh, out of the question. It looks like a second-hand shop. Andre King from Comic Bookings is trying to get one of his shows into a new venue, the Dogs Bollocks Pub in Central Auckland. Bollocks. Bollocks to you, Mike. And Mad Butcher Peter Leach and his CEO Mike Morton are keen to witness the pitch. Andre King, Comic Bookings. Pleased to meet you, Andre. Hey, Paddy. Paddy do. So, are you interested in doing comedy shows? Oh, absolutely. We've um, had a bit of comedy in the past. Is there anything in particular that you wanted to know about me? So what's your actual your pitch, your show? Uh, well, I mean, we're talking I, comedy here, but uh, yeah. are you the comedian or are you the... I'm, uh, I'm a comedian. It's an interesting pitch. Andre's not giving much away, so Paddy the publican has to do all the work. Uh, I want to know what sort of promotional activity you'd do and what your uh, general audience demographic is. General audience demographic changes... Uh, from week to week, venue to venue. It's not answering my question, unfortunately. And so what's your impression of your, your success or uh, popularity of shows you've done in the past? Well, so the success and popularity comes down to how much the venues want to run the shows. To be honest with you, I don't know how it would run as a, as a venue for a comedy show. I have no idea how it's going to work. This isn't giving me a lot of confidence, Andre. When you're putting a pitch, you only give positives. Exactly. Have I got a deal for you? Yeah. He, he made uh, Paddy do most of the talking and sort of trying to, it was like trying to extract teeth. I couldn't believe it with the negatives. Andre's sales pitch was pitiful, and he hasn't accepted any of the advice Peter and Mike have offered him. The butcher boys are a little hosed off, to be fair. I reckon he needs cooling down today, brother. I know exactly what to do. <laughs> Meanwhile, Pete and Mike have set up a meeting with the owners of an upmarket Auckland furniture store so that Vaughan from Kingwood Furniture can get a heads up on what the big outlets are looking for. I mean, nice timber, Michael, there's no doubt about it, but it's too, too plain, too it's ordinary, isn't it? Hmm. No, it's too clean. It's too clean? Yes, I mean, it's, it, it's recycled timber, but yeah. all the beautiful character yeah. I mean, and finish obviously the guy on. is putting a lot of effort into it, but uh, that is uh, out of the question. It looks like a second-hand shop. The colour's wrong, it needs to be a darker stain. And different handles. Right, <laughs> and look, the handle's not straight you, either. I think we've seen enough, Anna. Okay, well, let's, let's, go. let's go and talk All to right. him, shall we? Okay. If you'd visited us four years ago, this whole shop would have had the same Some look of furniture. Place. We sort of have a new generation of customer. They're earning good money. They're looking for something different. They want their homes not to look like their parents. Sounds like Vaughan might be out of touch with what people want. And giving customers what they want is a basic rule of successful business. Mike and Pete have also set up a meeting with a major chain store, so Vaughan can push some new products. The first one is the end grain chopping block, which we've done. We've, we've only put a handle on one end, so it'll actually stand up on somebody's bench. What type of wood is this made of? This is all Rimu, New Zealand Rimu, all end grain. We're prepared to put a guarantee on that, money back guarantee, for a period of three years on, on the products. You would have to give much more than a three year guarantee. Right. We would ask that you put your products through lab tests here. But lab testing means spending more money in product development, and that cost will have to be passed on. 
if we found that your prices were too high, there would be an option that we do give local suppliers, and that right. is that we come back with a target, yeah. because we know what our retail point it's must good. be. Mm -hmm. I don't think we can ask for more than that, Peter. OK, so it's not a firm yes on the cutting boards, but it is an opening for Vaughan to work on, and Peter and Mike still have another trick up their sleeves. Three guys walk into a bar and... Andre King wants to manage stand-up comedy shows and appear on stage himself. Peter and Mike say he's dreaming. He can't do both. But now it seems stubborn Andre may have finally seen the light. Three guys walk into a bar. No, no, no. The 17th. OK, forget the bar. Basically, I've had to make a decision to take a step back from the performance side and just concentrate on producing comedy shows. The reason for that is because I'm finding I'm, I just don't get enough time to uh, sit down and, and write new material and I can't really justify booking myself where I don't have a new set. She said to this woman, hi, what's your sign? She said, stop. As in, stop fooling yourself. Like Pete and Mike said. Well, uh, I believe it has been suggested by a particular person. Yeah, I guess on the surface, sure, they were right. But Andre is still not convinced that Pete and Mike can teach him anything about selling comedy. I'm happy with how I sell the shows. There is a difference between selling sausages and selling a comedy show or even marketing yourself as a comic. I mean, if I was a sausage, then I'd want the mad butcher to sell me. Coming up, Vaughan sees how the experts close a deal. That's got the home store written on it. It's top quality. Can we sell these? Certainly can. What sort of price are we retailing those for? And the butcher softens up stubborn Andre. Get fired up, mate! Get fired up, mate! Get fired up! That's it, mate! Get fired up! Get fired up, mate! Get fired up! Mad Butcher Peter Leach and his CEO Mike Morton have had their work cut out this week helping a Hamilton furniture company with big sales and marketing problems. And a young comedian with a business as flat as a bad punchline. But Peter's working the phones in search of new opportunities. Jimmy from the Cock and Bull, you're all mate the Mad Butcher. I've got a young comedian that wants to pitch a show to you. I want to have a meeting. 9.30 Wednesday. It's a date, mate. Hey! <laughs> Mate, oh yeah. Hello, Andre. Good to see you, dry mate. Yeah, thanks for that. that. Uh, well, what's the big news you're going to tell me? Uh, well, I've, I've uh, made a decision, mate. I'm, yeah. I'm giving up comedy. Well, mate, that's fantastic. Fantastic. I think now you might start to make a bit of progress, because you were trying to be the king of everything, but you were the master of nothing. Now that Andre has decided to put all his efforts into managing the business, the next step is to improve his pitching skills after the disaster at the dog's bollocks. Got to be honest, we weren't impressed with your presentation. If I had to rate you out of 10, would have been a minus zero. I'm inclined to agree, actually. Before I go out and do a cold call like that, I do research the venue, yeah. and that particular venue had just basically been dropped in my lap. So, Mate, you've got to get your head out of your ass. You've got to be ready the whole time. If you had been prepared that day, you could have sold that guy the deal. I guarantee I could have sold him the deal, all right? The other day, I sold a vegetarian some country pork sausages. Mate, a great deal, mate. Currently, Andre makes his money out of a fee he charges the venue for organising the gig, but Mike reckons he can do better. Andre, you're currently making the performers rich. You need to be getting a bigger slice of the action because you're carrying all the risk. I'm suggesting what you do is you also take a fee from the performers as a booking agent for them. And Mike also thinks Andre should charge out his shows at a fixed rate. It's going to make it a lot easier from an administration point. It's going to make it easier for you to work on a sales pitch to these guys because the numbers are just going to roll off your tongue. You've got a really good little pack here. You've got a CD which has got some you know, good comedy shows in there. If you've got samples of your flyers and I think there's some really good information here, I think we just need to condense a little bit. With a good promotional pack, Andre just needs to improve his verbal pitch. Should be a walk in the park for a stand-up comedian. You're a salesman, you're selling, you're selling your dream, you're selling your livelihood. And that's the way you've got to think of it every time you're doing one of these pitches. So we're going to work on it, we're going to nail it, and we're going to get our next pitch. We've got to get you fired up, so let's start warming you up now. Let's get fired up, mate. Get fired up, mate. Get fired up. That's it, mate. Get fired up. Get, get fired up, mate. Get fired up. That's it. Beautiful, beautiful, mate. You're ready. You're ready for action now. Meanwhile, Pete and Mike still need to help Vaughan find new retail markets for his range of custom-made furniture and kitchen products. 
Ah, now this is me, jewellery. He loves the bling, mate. He thinks he's bloody L.E.G. or something. For, for him or his wife? No, for him, mate. Have a look at him. He's got more jewellery on him than I've seen on any woman. You don't need any more. Now, this is the home store. They've got two stores, one here, one in Newmarket. Here we go. Peter and Mike helped the home store in Newmarket in episode one of A Mad Business. Dan! Dan, where are you, mate? Dan! Ah, there you are, Dan. Hello, mate. Have you haven't seen right? you, I haven't seen you and Nikki since you had the baby. That's so right. on behalf of the Mad Butcher Group, what every baby should have, <laughs> the Mad Butcher doll, mate. Are you going to scare it to death? <laughs> no, no, please, put the knife away, Dan. Yeah. How are you going running the company now? Yeah, well, I'm going better now that we've got this open. Um, yeah. It's a stressful couple of months yeah. there. And new market? Very well. Gangbusters. Those changes we recommended you to make have really worked. Through the roof, mate. Fantastic. Similar, we've been working with uh, Vaughan. We're looking at using some of his machinery to make some other little one-off products. These chopping boards, obviously, in-grain chopping boards. Um, well made, uh, we can make them any size. We've used water, waterproof glue on them so they won't, won't fall apart. And they're all food safe because we've used uh, food safe oil and things on them as well. Over Perfectly here. balanced. Right. Watch this, solid. <laughs> solid. That's got the home store written on it. It's top quality, you know. Can you sell these? Certainly can. What sort of price are we retailing those for? You could retail these at the same price you're currently retailing the other ones for. What I'd probably like to do is get Nicky to have a look at it as well. Perfect. Uh, oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. I thought he was running the company. <laughs> I want to get Nicky to look at it. <laughs> Are you yeah. serious? I know who's wearing the pants still. <laughs> yeah, fair enough. At the Cock and Bull, it's time for Andre to have a crack at his new and improved sales pitch. Anytime you're ready, Andre. Come on. Mate! Oh, yeah. You're late. Yeah. Right, you ready? Good to go. Right, positive, upbeat. Good you're to go. You're selling. Good to go. Just you're not a comedian, you're a salesman. Do it. Rock and roll. Jenny, have you ever been to a comedy show before? Yes, I have, actually. Did you enjoy it? I did, I did. Awesome. That's what I want to bring through to the cock and ball. A typical show that we produce has an MC and up to three acts. Each act does about 25 to 30 minutes. Okay. He's getting to the point and he's doing the job and that will be better. We're happy to work in with what advertising you guys have got going already. We also have gig guys that we list in. Go for the kill, mate, now. You've got to. I actually have a brochure here. It's also got a little sample poster on the back there that you can have a look at as to what we're able to sort of put together for you. We also have this DVD, which contains little snippets of uh, the different acts that we're able to bring through for the shows. What's going to make people come here rather than go to the comedy club um, on Queen Street. Close it, Any of your locals that want to go and see a comedy show don't have to drive into the city. Yeah. They can come down to the local. And if they're coming down to the local, then you can make money off the door. And if they're going to make money off the door, then you're going to make money off the bar as well. And if we can engineer all of that while providing entertainment to your clients, mm -hmm. then everyone's a winner. Okay. Nice done. Nice done. Nice done. Yeah. Oh. I thought it was all right. I thought it was pretty good too. I thought it was excellent. I thought he did really well. Definitely a really good concept and hopefully um, between us we can develop it further and the cock and bull will look at having stand-up comedy coming in here on a regular basis. It's taken a big boot up the backside, but Andre King has done a sales pitch that Peter Leach is proud of. But we're on the right track, mate, so good on you, mate. Thank you very good much. Good on you. Down on Hamilton, Vaughan from Kingwood Furniture is also seeing results from acting on our experts' advice. Business now has really improved. We've got plenty to do at the moment. More worried about how we're going to get the work done now instead of not having enough. The chopping boards have sold well, and Vaughan has delivered a second shipment to the home store. He's even put some money into street signage. But what about the vans? Sign writing on the vans. <laughs> That's not done as yet, but we are looking into that. Mike and Pete get stuck into me about, about our sales techniques and things. We've actually found that it's actually improved. So we've done some more major advertising. We've got a whole lot of back pages in one of the local papers. I'd rather now just do one big ad rather than two or three small ones. Vaughan's also found some contract work for the computerised router, so the company's finally getting a decent return on its $300,000 investment. The other thing we're looking at is a whole lot more wholesale work for a major chain. At this stage, they look like they're going to be 40, 50% on top of our turnover now and hopefully increasing even more. So thanks to a big rev up from Peter and Mike, this furniture manufacturer is out of the woods. It's just a matter of having somebody chasing you along and sometimes we actually need that as, as business owners, somebody else to chase us along and get us a bit going a bit better.
It's taken some time for Andre to come around to Pete and Mike's way of thinking. He's realised that in order to build his booking business, he must give up the stand-up himself, at least for a while. He's done his part. Now Pete and Mike have to keep their end of the deal. I'd like to order two costumes, please. Uh, Hercules, one for myself, and the other one's is a Mary Poppins outfit. That's for Mr Mike Morton. You don't make it for XL, do you? <laughs> Tonight at the Bog in Manuko, Andre is focusing all his attention on making sure the show runs smoothly for the punters, the venue, and the comedians. So, uh, so with this gig though, Andre, are we going to get paid this time? <laughs> um, I'm not just doing a sound check. <laughs> okay, guys. Uh, first of all, thanks for showing up. Appreciate it. So, line up for tonight. Ewan, got you down to MC. Are we allowed to take the piss out of the man butcher? Absolutely. All right. I'd recommend it. Apparently, he's here tonight, but he's in disguise, so I'm not okay. sure. So for, not well, yeah, he could be anyone, really. Okay. I've done some ridiculous things while I've worked for you, but I've never... Cross-dressing wasn't part of it, mate. You look good, mate, mate. No one would recognise you. So, uh, we've got a good turnout for tonight? We'll probably have over 100. Yeah, we've got all the gear for the PA, so I'll run around and go and set that up. As the acts come in, I'll make sure that they sort of come through and introduce themselves here. Andre knows that if he pulls this one off, then chances are the comedians will be lining up to work with him again. But after all the effort he's put in, he's finding watching the show more nerve-wracking than being up on stage. Nice heckle. <laughs> Why don't you join the New Zealand cricket team? They're looking for a spinner. <laughs> with any luck, it'll just be a really good show and everyone will leave happy and Paul will be happy and the acts will be happy. <sighs> It's more nervous than I've been for a long time. Yeah, that's the only reason we do comedy is because we can't afford to buy drinks. We just come along hoping there's a bar tab. Okay, that's not the build-up you needed, was it? <laughs> supposed to leave them on a the high. I'll just, I'll, I'll bring it back. Hang on. I didn't think it was that funny. <laughs> They're rerunning all of Billy T. James shows, which is fantastic. Yeah. I'm just really pissed off that he's doing all of Mike King's material. <laughs> well, better night tonight, Mary, isn't it? Bigger crowd, uh, good MC, uh, that you and Gilmore's a very good MC, and the comedians are better. Common the publican bookings. would have to be happy because everyone's had a feed, they're all drinking. Yeah. Sunday night, mate. Yeah. Who goes out on a Sunday night? Not many people. Well, you are old, though, to be Give me my sword. No, I want to have a turn of it. It actually had the opposite effect. Instead of trying to catch criminals, kind of sounded like he was trying to recruit them. <laughs> Peter, yeah. how you going? It's Michael, mate. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I, I thought that was your date. You know, mate? Crikey, hey. you look pretty. Andre, I think we've turned the corner. Here's your bag, mate. May you fill it up with cash. Awesome. And here's the sword to guard yourself, mate. Because, mate, you'll need it. You've got so much money. And here's an umbrella yeah. in case it rains. Yeah. Our work here is done. And here's right. a couple of to wake up there. <laughs> <laughs> You're an idiot, Michael. Was the lipstick really necessary? Yes. Yes. I quite like the feeling of the wind up my skirt now, actually. I'm getting used to it. Next time on A Mad Business, we meet a couple of mates who buy a takeaway in video shop. If you could relate it to an old car, I suppose. Needed a bit of a tidy up and a paint and uh, get it running again. We sort of looked at all the books and decided we could make a real go of it. But they need a crash course in business basics if they're going to make it work. Very simply, boys, you've got to get your head out of your ass and start acting like businessmen. And there's a boutique hotel whose husband and wife owners find it's not the lifestyle or the income they'd dreamed of. It is stressful, worrying about, you know, making sure you're making enough money through to just getting on as husband and wife. I got you, mate, I got you! Do, 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 do. <laughs> Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Why did the sheep cross the road? To get away from the mad butcher shop. <laughs> you're bringing him to the show, yeah. No. You're, you're trying to wind it up, but he's making you a party noise. Get your ass out of your head and give it to it! No, you get out of your ass. Get your head out of your ass. Get your ass out of your head. <laughs> 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 <laughs>